In this episode of the Brisbane Property Podcast, it is market update time, and we're going to dive into the data for Brisbane to get a really good understanding about which segment of the market is outperforming. Is it the housing market or is it the unit market here in Brisbane? Tune into this episode to find out more. Welcome to the Brisbane Property Podcast with your hosts, Melinda and Scott Jennison. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Brisbane Property Podcast with Scott and Melinda from Streamline Property Buyers, and it is market update time. It is. I can just tell how excited you get on market update podcast recording days, Scott. Um, And I think that may be because um, a lot of the work is done through um, an analysis of the end of month information. And for this month, that information came out on the 1st of May. And so today we will be summarizing what all of that data has shown us in terms of price movements in Brisbane across different market segments, um, as well as through the housing market and the unit market. And we'll also look at what's happening in the rental market as we do every month. So I know, I, do, I mean, I do get excited actually, because I get all these numbers thrown at me. And um, I, I do see a lot of this in our team at, at Streamline Property Buyers here. We're out and about on the on the road. And it, when you go out on weekends and you see the amount of numbers and shoes that have lined up for open homes and things like that, it, it reiterates what you actually see on the ground when you actually see the numbers. Mm. So it's good to actually have this as well as the on the, on the ground experience um, and what we witness. But we, you know, we're still seeing a lot of people out and about at at opens and auctions and things like that. So obviously, the market is still moving forward. It certainly is. And that has been confirmed in the data itself. Although I will say that we're starting to see a little bit of segmentation within the data. So what I mean by that is if we're looking at the headline data and typically the headline information that goes out in the big press releases each month, and this is what's talked about in the newspapers and and what's on the news is the dwellings data. That is um, a combined value of house values and unit values. Um, And that records an overall figure in terms of what's happening within both segments of the market. It's all grouped together. And when you look at that headline information for dwellings, uh, one would assume that the market is decelerating in its rate of growth. And that is simply because Brisbane's median dwelling values have fallen below 1% to 0.9% in April. And this is the first time and this has occurred over the last 12 months. So that's when we look at the housing market and the unit market with all of those sales combined as one. Although when we take a deeper dive into the data, and this is obviously why having an understanding of data and, and in data interpretation can make a big difference. We can see clearly that the housing market and the unit market are actually performing very differently. And I think that's going to be the the headline in the topic uh, or in the podcast today. Oh, I think it's interesting. One of the, the notes you actually got down here is the um when you talked about it, it's not unexpected because Brisbane market has seen a 56.81 growth since- Percent growth. Mm. Yeah, percent growth since COVID, March mm. 2020. Um, and and that, that means that we've shifted just under $300,000 at a median dwelling level over four years. Yeah, it's a huge, huge market shift. So those that are not actively in the market, it's really hard to understand that market shift and and what that means if you are a buyer today. Because yeah, if you were a buyer five years ago, the Brisbane market was a very different market to what it is today. And that's really important for people to understand. Um, But, you know, I think the differentiation between the house price movement and the unit price movement here in Brisbane, it's become um, a trend that's set in place. So when we look at the last two years, 12 months, three months, and the last month, the unit market here in Brisbane has outperformed the housing market. That is in terms of capital growth, so price escalation, also in terms of rental Price growth, so that is um, an assessment of the yield or the return on investment. So it's an interesting shift and perhaps a telltale sign in terms of perhaps affordability, the way people are prepared to live, to stay in closer proximity to those lifestyle hubs, um, and something that we've seen for a couple of years now on the ground, simply because of the number of buyers that are turning up to those units and townhouses that do make up that unit data. And even the houses. Um, and if I just jump into um, when I talk about on the ground, on the weekend, um, before we go through all the numbers, 
um, you know, we went to some auctions and, you know, we saw lineups. We saw the amount of shoes that were that were lined up out the front. A property that was, I think it was five years ago, five years ago, um, was sold for about 1.8 and on the weekend sold for 2.85. No um, changes to the property no itself. No changes. It's five years older. Um, and again, and then there's another one we went to, there was 25 registered bidders. Yeah, that's 24 people still in the market for a similar product to that. And just for some perspective, that was a price point of um, around that $2 million yep. mark. So uh, large family homes in blue chip locations, uh, and that is the level of demand that we're seeing for that product type here in Brisbane. So um, obviously the number of buyers that register to bid on a property sometimes is a reflection of the amount of stock that is available. So whilst we've seen that buyer demand continue to escalate over time, we've also seen um, listings or the number of properties that become available for sale, they have shrunk month on month. So when we look at new listings, that's properties that have just come onto the market, onto domain or realestate.com over the last month. In April, those new, list those new listings were down 14.27% compared to March. So that's a big drop mm. um, in the number of properties available for sale. And when we look at total listings, that's all of the properties available for sale, where whether they've just come to the market in the last month or whether they've been on the market for uh, several months. Total listings also declined between March and April down by 8.15%. So this is why buyers are finding it really tough. The stock levels are low. When we talk about stock, that's the listings, the number of properties available for sale um, because sellers just don't seem to be wanting or well, they're not, not willingly bringing a lot of those properties to the market and that is creating that supply shortage. And it has been part of the reason why Brisbane prices have continued to escalate now for every month for, for more than 12 months. Yeah, and it definitely has that imp impact on it. Um, keeping in mind April, we obviously had some school holidays. We did. Um, and some public holidays. I think mm. we've run out of just about run out of all of our public holidays in Queensland. Um, this seemed to lump them into the start of the year here in Queensland, but we've got a couple coming up later in the year. But yeah, the, that does have a little impact on it. But still, um, as you said, that will keep pressure on the prices because those listing numbers are definitely, definitely down. And even compared to 12 months ago, when we look at the total volume of listings in the market here in Brisbane, compared to the same time 12 months ago, total listing volumes were 8.31% lower. So regardless of how you want to interpret the data, um, buyers in April this year had fewer options to choose from compared to buyers from 12 months ago or from buyers um, even one month ago. So, you know, it's pretty tough for buyers out there. There's a lot of competition um, and that's why we continue to see a lot of registered bidders turning up to bid at auction. Not always those bidders um, will raise their paddle and we'll talk about the um, the ratio of those that do raise the paddle in this podcast. Uh, but we're also seeing a lot of properties sell with multiple offers in place. In fact, that's become the norm. So it's very rare to find a property and be the only buyer putting forward an offer. And that is that imbalance that we keep talking about between supply, that's the number of properties available, and the demand, which is the buyer volume that continues to escalate. So with the with the lower listings, obviously we've got we seem to have an, an increased buyer activity. Um, sales volumes in, volumes in Brisbane have risen four point four percent over the past year. Yeah, so that can be an indication of buyer activity. So. Um, a higher level of transactions um, evidenced through higher sales volumes uh, can represent increased buyer activity. Uh, but what I will say is that something else we can look at is those median days on market. So according to the data, the median days on market is tracking lower. It's currently standing at 22 days, according to CoreLogic. I will say, however, that anecdotally, when we see properties listed for sale um, one week, in most cases, there may be an open for inspection that week. There may be an open home that first weekend. And a lot of those properties are selling once again on that Saturday afternoon or on the Monday or Tuesday following the first open home. So the days on market that we often see, especially for quality properties, is often less than seven days. Um, and I think that what the data is tracking here, when the data shows this days on market at 22 days, um, it could potentially be a reflection of when that property transaction becomes an unconditional sale with a standard um, conditional period of potentially up to 14 days. So again, it's so important by being out on the ground to um, understand 
you know, is that data truly reflective of the speed of the market or is there something that we're seeing by being out on the ground that that may not be represented in the data? And this is an example of why you can't purely rely on data when it comes to understanding a market because the data is not always accurately reflecting what we're seeing on the ground. And that number will be influenced then by auctions because you'll have an auction campaign, which is generally a, a four-week auction campaign. Yes. So obviously when you take the auction campaigns into, into account and then mm. the properties that sell fast – has dropped that down to that 22 days, as Melinda mentioned. Um, that is when the auctions go to through all the way through the campaign as well. Um, some of them are actually closing uh, and selling before prior to auction. So mm, that's right. Yep. So let's jump on to auctions now that we've mentioned it. And um, auction clearance rate remained pretty steady at 63.9%. Yeah, that's pretty consistent with the previous few months here in Brisbane. That's according to the CoreLogic data. Um, when we take a deeper dive, we can study the Apollo auctions information. Uh, they run a lot of the auctions here in Brisbane. According to their data, um, on average, there were 3.1 registered bidders um, in Brisbane per auction throughout April. So that was a slight decrease uh, from 3.7 registered bidders per auction in March. So um, that's an interesting trend. As we pointed out just a little while ago, we were at an auction just on Saturday, um, 25 registered bidders. So it's very property specific. Uh, there have been other uh, properties where you turn up and there may only be two registered bidders. So it is very dependent on the property, but quality is attracting a very high volume. Uh, furthermore, when we look at the percentage of those people that have actually registered to bid um, compared to those that raise a paddle during the auction. So they're actively participating in that auction. 62.6% of registered bidders actively uh, participated in auctions throughout April. Um, and that's compared to 60.8% in March. So more buyer activity at auctions over the last four weeks compared to the month prior. So an indication that that buyers are eager and they are willing to participate. Now, was the, just on that one, you mentioned about the 25 registered bidders um, mm. by memory, seven active bidders, sorry, mm. 25 registered, seven active bidders um, on that property as well. Another one we saw later in the day, I think there was five or six active bidders and that property sold for high four mills. Mm. Um, so yeah, a lot of activity and people are, people are prepared to put the paddle up um, and not miss out on property. Um, Brisbane dwelling values. Mm. So if we jump onto dwelling values, we've seen a, a rise of point uh, zero point nine percent in dwelling values for uh, according to CoreLogic. Yeah, so that's the monthly change. And remember, dwelling values is a combination of those houses and units combined. Uh, that puts the quarterly dwellings value uh, growth at 3.1% here in Brisbane um, and annual dwellings growth at 16.1%. So when we're looking at that annual change, uh, Brisbane is in second place behind Perth. Uh, there's been a lot of um, comment around Perth in, in recent months in terms of the, the rate of growth month on month. Quarterly growth, um, again, Perth is in the lead at 6%, Adelaide 3.3%, and then Brisbane's quarterly growth at 3.1%. Again, just stressing this is dwellings values, um, not just houses or units separated. Um, and then that monthly growth, Perth is still strong at 2%, Adelaide at 1.3%, um, and Brisbane in third place there at 0.9% month-on-month growth. So Brisbane median values for dwellings um, sitting well above Melbourne's median dwelling value uh, yet again. So we haven't seen um, much change in the Melbourne market since the median value here in Brisbane did take over. But again, um, as we'll point out, looking specifically at houses and units, Brisbane is still under Melbourne um, in both houses and units, although only just. So that's a bit of a rundown in terms of what's happening with dwelling values. And if you that was on core logic. So if you look at prop track, because um, we do like the Obviously, compare yeah. the two. Um, prop track, we saw a a rise there of zero point two three percent for April. Um, annual currently twelve point eight two percent, and the median price of eight hundred eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah, so pretty similar um, median according to CoreLogic at eight hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars. So uh, definitely showing the same upward trend on a monthly and annual basis across the two data sets. Now, of course, we always like to break down the dwellings data by uh, price point. So when we look at the bottom 25% of property values and compare that with the top 25% of property values, there's been a clear 
um, divergence in which segment of the market continues to grow at a faster rate. And that is the more affordable properties. So we've seen in the last three months up to the end of March, 4.6% growth in dwelling values um, in the lowest 25% of property values compared to only 2% growth over the same period of time in the top 25% of property values. So this is definitely an indicator that um, the more affordable segment of the market is moving at a faster pace. As we will point out um, as we move ahead in this podcast, uh, the majority of units and townhouses will fall into the bottom 25% of property values. And this segment of the market on a monthly basis has um, doubled the performance of the housing market. So this data uh, for the segmentation will be skewed because of property type. We cannot just automatically assume that the cheaper housing, that is houses on single blocks, are, are moving at a much faster rate than the more expensive housing because there's going to be that, that change in the data set because of the type of properties that are transacting within each price bracket. You just stole what I was about to say. I was about to talk about the unit market and how it's performed and mm. how that has had an influence on that segment of, of the market as well. So um, whilst we're going to break it down then, let, let's jump into uh, housing values. And again, we've we've seen Brisbane an increase of 0.8% in housing values. Yeah. So that's definitely been a slowdown from March when the growth rate reached 1.1% here in Brisbane. So we definitely are seeing house price growth decelerate. That is, it is still positive month on month, but that rate of growth um, is definitely slowing down. Well, it has slowed down from March through to April. Quarterly growth for houses in Brisbane now sitting at 2.7% and annual growth sitting at 15.9% here in Brisbane. Now we talked about those median dwelling values in Brisbane being uh, much higher than the median dwelling values in Melbourne. When we're looking at the house market, according to CoreLogic, um, the median value for a house, 920000 and the median value um, for a house in Melbourne, 941000 So that gap is closing. Uh, but I will say when we look at the prop track data, the median value uh, for a house in Brisbane is $911,000 and for a house in Melbourne, $912,000. So according to PropTrack, that gap has almost completely closed in the housing market, which is a very interesting trend because typically Melbourne has always been a more expensive market than Brisbane has. So um, it's definitely something that people uh, need to be aware of as they're, they're looking to purchase in Brisbane because the dollar doesn't go as far as it used to many years ago. So the, the monthly change then in the median value um, for the four weeks of April, that amounts to $10,058, while the quarterly change in house values, according to CoreLogic, totals at 31,418. And just to to make that very clear, that's at the median value level. So if you were were looking for a property that sits around that $920,000 price point, that would be the um the amount or the rate of shift that you could expect on a month by month basis. Um if you're looking at a more expensive property, obviously you need to calculate the percentage growth um on that monthly and quarterly basis, so 0.8% on a monthly basis and 2.7% on a quarterly basis. But if you're looking at a more affordable property that might sit under that median value, um, the amount of the actual shift will be less. So it's just good to quantify that amount because I think when you talk about 0.8%, people think that's actually not a lot. But if you're negotiating on a property and it might be the difference between purchasing and spending $5,000 more today um, at the current rate of growth, it's $10,000 more um, over a period of four weeks. And that just helps people to quantify um, the actual dollar amount. So Brisbane unit values, again, Mm -hmm. um, strong unit market in in Brisbane, as we've mentioned a few times, and we've seen an increase of 1.6%. Yeah. To core logic. And that's just over a one month period. So compared to the housing market, we saw 0.8% growth. The unit market's performance was double according to that core logic information. And a quarterly uh, movement in units here in Brisbane, 5% change over the quarter compared to 2.7% change in the housing market over the quarter. And annually, the unit market in Brisbane, um, it's been the top performer Australia wide at 17.4% 
price movement. Um, and that's also behind the annual change in house market uh, movement here in Brisbane, which is 15.9%. So the unit market definitely has been a strong performer across our city. Uh, and we're seeing more and more demand move into that space uh, because of affordability constraints and also potentially lifestyle choices that people are making. So if we break that down again, like we did before, and we and we break it down into a dollar amount, um, an increase then on that median value for units is increased by 12,422. Um, and over the last quarter, that's a, an increase of $31,620. And the median value here in Brisbane, according to CoreLogic, for the first time in history, that median value for a unit surpassed $600,000. Um, so it's just sitting above that that price point, the median sitting at $600,215. So if you're shopping at that median value, those numbers that Scott quoted um, are accurate in terms of how much you can expect that value to change on a monthly and a quarterly basis. Uh, the prop track data also shows very similar trend um, here in Brisbane with monthly growth sitting at 0.94% in the unit market and annual growth sitting at 15.08%. And prop track has the median value for a unit in Greater Brisbane at $617,000. So, you know, really strong performance in this segment of the market. And something that we've not seen here in Brisbane for many, many years, especially off the back of that peak oversupply that hit our city in 2016 and 2017, where they simply built too many units and we didn't have the demand um, from buyers or tenants to absorb all of that stock. And that's why we saw that downward pressure on prices. Whereas now moving forward and looking forward, even considering the um, attached dwelling approval numbers, um, it's all spiraling downward, which means the future supply of these units and townhouses into our city um, is looking quite dismal. And of course, we understand property prices are always driven by the balance between supply and demand. So when we know that there's not a lot of future supply coming, but we've got this heightened demand, we can get, get an indication based on the pressure of that market, which direction prices are likely to move. And at this stage, um, we can't see any change in, in that segment of the market and prices will continue to escalate while people have the capacity to, to pay more in some markets. And the rental market, um, this this one feels like we're sort of the, almost the same as most months lately. Mm. Um, it doesn't seem to change a lot. Um, very, very, very tight, um, sitting between sort of 1% and 0.9% monthly. Yep. Um, and that's obviously with that tight vacancy rate, it puts a lot of pressure on on prices um, and yep. prices rising still on um, on rent as well. Yeah, so with the vacancy rate in Brisbane, yeah, you were right. Across the all of the months of 2024, it's been hovering between 0.9% and 1%. The most recent vacancy rate data, according to SQM Research, sitting at 1% in April. Um, even when we look at the vacancy rates by region here in Brisbane, within Bean Lead, no change between March and April, sitting at 1%. And in fact, 12 months ago, that's where the vacancy rate in that region sat. So, you know, Despite the fact that, you know, we have this issue of really tight supply, it doesn't seem to be changing uh, monthly or annually, certainly not in Beanley. In the CBD, vacancy rates um, between March and April increased 0.1%. So currently they're sitting at 1.8%. 12 months ago, the inner city CBD area had a vacancy rate of 1.2%. So there's been a small uptick in, in the number of properties available for rent in that area. In East Brisbane, vacancy rates between March and April also increased 0.1%. Um, they are currently sitting at 1% round and 12 months ago, they were at 1.1%. So it's a story of very tight vacancy in East Brisbane over the last month and 12 months as well. Inner Brisbane, um, in April, current vacancy sitting at 1.2%. 12 months ago, that was 1.1%, so very similar. In Ipswich, we saw vacancy at 0.8% in March. That increased to 1% in April, but 12 months ago, it was actually 1.3%. So there's been a tightening in that particular region over the last 12 months. In northern Brisbane, uh, between March and April, we saw a 0.1% increase in vacancy rates. That is now sitting at 0.8%. 12 months ago, that region was sitting at 0.9%. So we're still um, in one of the tightest 
um, held areas from a tenant's perspective. That's the northern Brisbane suburbs. Um, Southeast Brisbane, 0.8% vacancy in March, 0.9% in April. And that was sitting at 1.2% 12 months ago. So it's become a little bit tougher for those in Southeast Brisbane to find a vacant property to rent. Southern Brisbane, there's been no change across the two months from March to April, currently sitting at 1%. And that was 0.9% 12 months ago. So it's been very tight over the last 12 months. And then West Brisbane, uh, it's been at 1% over the last month and also over the last 12 months. So also very tight in that Western corridor for people looking to rent a property in those regions as well. So the the increase in the in the rent side of things, I mean, we've seen a change last month. The annual change was seven point six percent. Well, this month, um, we've seen a rise to seven point nine percent. And just for clarity, that's for house rents. So if you are looking um, to rent a house, the rate of growth um, has is actually starting to to grow slightly again. So yeah, annual change at 7.6% at the end of last month, that's increased to 7.9% this month. So we're seeing some more price creep in the um, amounts that tenants will have to pay to secure a rental property if they're looking for a house. However, if you're looking for a unit, the annual change in rents over the last 12 months um, was 10.5% at the end of April, whereas at the end of March, that was sitting at 11.2%. So there's been a slight easing in the rate of growth in that rental market. And it's not surprising because there's been some very, very strong gains in that segment of the market. Of course, the unit segment of the market is still outperforming in terms of rental price growth on an annual basis compared to the housing market here in Brisbane. So you know, many tenants will actually be uh, reaching affordability limits for a lot of properties that they may be considering to rent. That's potentially pushing people into different product types or pushing them further away from the CBD. We're probably also going to see some compositional change that is more people moving in together um, with, with more people living in a single dwelling compared to how we used to live many years ago. And it's simply driven by affordability constraints. So Grow Shields um, for Brisbane, houses, um, no change, basically. So we're sitting houses currently sitting at three point six percent, and for units sitting at five percent for gross yields. Yeah, that's right. So you know the, the top um, amount of income that you're generating from an investment property is going to be higher for units than it is for houses. Of course, um, there's going to be additional costs. So your net yield needs to be considered because when you're buying a unit or a townhouse, typically you will also be paying body corporate fees. But uh, definitely, yeah, much higher income at a gross level for units compared to houses here in Brisbane. So a bit of a summary. Mm. Uh, look, I, I still think it's very, very strong. With, when, when I when I say summary-wise and I, and I talk about what we see, and I, as I mentioned earlier, when what we see out and about on the ground, um, we're still seeing, as as we've mentioned, very low listing numbers um, and a lot of buyers out and about looking at property. So lots and lots of shoes um, at the front door. So um, I still think there's still those good fundamentals there for Brisbane as well. Yeah, and this is despite there's been a lot of adversity in, in our market over the last 12 months. I would say that, you know, buyers have been faced with rising interest rates. Um, there's been low consumer sentiment. Uh, we've also seen uh, affordability constraints in some areas as the cost of living has continued to escalate due to uh, escalated CPI. So, you know, this has actually you know, it's almost surprising to see that the house market and the unit market especially here in Brisbane, has continued to escalate so rapidly. But I think the story is a supply-driven story because we simply have not had uh, the number of properties available for sale uh, compared to the number of buyers that have been in the market ready to buy. So uh, the story is not the same across all markets around Australia. And I think if you were looking at the annual performance in other markets, for example, Melbourne has seen house values change just 2.5%, whilst Brisbane's escalated 17.4%. Hobart has seen house prices fall 1.7% over the last 12 months. Um, and Canberra has seen no change at all over on an annual basis. And yet you've got other capital city markets. You know, as I said, Brisbane has increased 17.4%. Perth has increased um, slightly more at 26%. Uh, sorry, 19.6% according to CoreLogic. So these are the the markets that have really performed very well compared to other markets that have not performed as well. So the broader economic conditions have been consistent across all markets, 
What's been slightly different perhaps is um, the movement of people into some areas compared to others, but also affordability. I think that's been a big driver and, and supply the number of properties available because that's going to be very specific to different regions. And in fact, when we look at total listings over different markets, the story has been quite different over the last 12 months. So it does contribute to the escalation of prices in some areas compared to others. And, and that long-term supply, as you mentioned, very tight. Dwelling approvals um, are down and still declining. Um, population. Mm. Um, so we, we've seen that change again, that international migrants coming back in. Mm. Um, yep. And that's obviously fueling that population side of things um, in Brisbane as well. Yeah, it's interesting because off the back of COVID, the population surge throughout Southeast Queensland was largely driven by interstate migrants. But uh, the spike more recently in international migrants into Southeast Queensland has been significant. And we cannot underestimate how that shifts demand pressure for different product types here in Brisbane, especially in that rental market. A lot of the migrants coming in are very happy to live in high density living arrangements. And potentially, you know, that's what's going to continue to put pressure on, on the unit market in the rental space uh, moving forward. Of course, not everyone that moves from interstate or overseas is, is going to be a buyer in the market, but they all need shelter. They all need somewhere to live. So they definitely uh, contribute to that rental uh, demand pressure. Uh, it's It's been an interesting, you know, 12 months. I think we've come into this period of strong growth off the back of some very short, sharp declines. And I think that at that time, you know, our commentary was the fundamentals are in place for very strong price growth, that the, the short, sharp decline in Brisbane was really driven by fear um, of rising interest rates. And yet here we are um, after significant price growth in Brisbane, in both the unit market and the housing market, um, you know, it's almost sad for those that did sell, you know, in the time of, of the fearful market um, to see just, just you know, what what their losses may have been if only they held. And, and I think this is just a, um, a sign that property markets do cycle and sometimes those cycles are very rapid and fast paced um, and it's more about time in the market not timing, but time in the market um, to ride out the peaks and troughs uh, if you are wanting to make some strong decisions based on fundamentals. One thing we do see also when we're out is um, some buyer frustration. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, so we're seeing a lot of buyers that are quite frustrated. Um, they're saying not enough, not enough properties are coming to the market, they're missing out, they're selling too fast. Hmm. Um, so there's a bit of frustration happening on that side from the buyer side of it. Um, so obviously, if you need... Need a buyer's agent? Call out the streamlined property buyers. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, strong, strong market. We, as I, as I said, uh, a lot of people out and about. Um, and if you are out and about on a weekend and you see someone with a streamlined shirt on, tap us on the shoulder and say hello. It's always nice to chat to people when we're out and about. Um, Saturdays are a fantastic day to be talking to people as well. And more and more, we are getting um, some of our podcast listeners come and say a good day on a weekend. I think they're surprised to see us out at properties, but that is what we do. Um, we we say it on our podcast all the time and we are out every Saturday. So please say hi if you see us. Um, we love to, to bump into podcast listeners and, um, you know, we also love to ask you what you'd like to hear in future episodes. So be prepared to answer that question if we, we throw that one at you as well. I'm happy to <laughs> take a coffee too if anyone wants to swing that coffee along. <laughs> uh, look, that's the market update. It's been great chatting again. Um, until next week, um, more great episodes coming as well with some guests and some, some great information, obviously, to share. So as we normally do, I will let Melinda wrap it up and close it out for the week, um, this week. Until next week, take care and bye for now. Yes, thank you once again for joining us on the Brisbane Property Podcast. As always, if you have enjoyed this episode, we would love for you to leave us a review and share the episode with friends and family. We hope you have a fantastic week and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thanks so much and bye for now.